Hello friends, welcome to our program for grade 10. Today we are going to look at the second part of our series of programs on factors of polynomials. So let's start. Well, today we are going to learn how to use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. A quick recap. Remember, we did that long division in the last video, all right? So x squared plus 6x plus 4, that's what we call the dividend. x plus 4 is the quotient. x plus 2, that will be the divisor. And negative 4 is the remainder. We note the following. The dividend will be equal to the quotient multiplied by the divisor plus the remainder. Right, so that will be x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 2 plus negative 4. When you remove the brackets, you will get x squared plus 6x plus 8 minus 4. That is x squared plus 6x plus 4. This is indeed the dividend. Therefore, x squared plus 6x plus 4 can be written as x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 2 plus negative 4. Now, this x squared plus 6x plus 4 is simply a function of x, right? So we can call it f of x. x plus 4 is another function. Let's call it g of x. x plus 2, we can write it as x minus a. And minus 4 is the remainder, that is r. Now, suppose that we want to find f of a. What will that be? Well, f of a will be g of a multiplied by a minus a plus r. But what is a minus a? a minus a is 0. Therefore, f of a equal to r. That's where the remainder theorem comes in. So the remainder theorem states that given a polynomial p of x, which is divided by x minus a, the remainder will be p of a. That is, you equate x minus a to 0, x will be equal to a, and you replace the x in the polynomial by a. Right? Now, look at this. Find the remainder when 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 is divided by x plus 1. We have done a few examples like this in the first video. Do you remember how we proceed? No? Well, we did a long division, right? So, let's do a long division here to find the remainder. So, that will be 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 divide by x plus 1. Right, how do we proceed? 3x cubed, we divide by x. That will be 3x squared. Just be careful where you place it, all right? So, Next step, you will multiply the 3x squared by x plus 1. That is, you will get 3x cubed plus 3x squared. We subtract 3x cubed minus 3x cubed. That's 0. You don't need to put it. Negative 4x squared minus 3x squared. That's negative 7x squared. And then you carry down the 5x. What do we do now? Well, same procedure again. You will divide the negative 7x squared by x. And you will get negative 7x. And then we multiply again. That is negative 7x multiplied by x, which will be negative 7x squared. And negative 7x times 1, which will be negative 7x. And then we subtract, we're going to get 12x, we carry down the negative 6, so that's 12x minus 6. 
And then, do we stop here? No, because you can divide it again. So 12x divided by x, that will be 12. And then we multiply the 12 by x plus 1. We will get 12x plus 12. And then we subtract 12x minus 12x, that's 0. Minus 6 minus 12 is negative 18. So we will get a remainder of negative 18. This is a rather long procedure, right? Now, let's see with the remainder theorem. So this was the question, that is, find the remainder when 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 is divided by x plus 1. So you always start with p of x equal to 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. We have written p of x. You could have, well, you could write f of x, g of x, or any other function that you want, right? So the remainder will be p of a. And what is p of a? You will equate x plus 1 to 0. Therefore, you will get x equal to minus 1. So the p of a is simply p of minus 1, right? Now, what is p of one, minus 1? It's simply you will replace all the x by negative 1. So you will get 3 times negative 1 cube minus 4 times negative 1 square plus 5 times negative 1 minus 6, right? So what will this be? It's simply minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6, which is negative 18. So it's a quicker method to find the remainder. Let's take a look at another example. Now, find the remainder when x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 is divided by x minus 2. Okay, how can we do it? First step, let f of x or p of x be x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. Right, we know that it is divided by x minus 2. Therefore, x minus 2 equal to 0, x will be equal to 2. So our p of a will be p of 2. Now, what does that mean, p of 2? You will replace all the x by 2. So that will be 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 to the square plus 4 times 2 minus 3, which is equal to 8 minus 16 plus 8 minus 3, which is negative 3. Therefore, the remainder will be negative 3. Example 3, given that 2x squared plus ax minus 5 leaves a remainder of 6 when divided by x minus 1. Find the value of a. So if it is divided by x minus 1, x minus 1 equal to 0, x will be equal to 1. Therefore, our p of a will be p of 1, and the remainder is 6, right? So we start by let p of x equal to 2x squared plus ax minus 5, p of 1 equal to 6, okay? Now, what is p of 1? We will replace all the x by 1, so that will be 2 times 1 squared, plus 8 times 1 minus 5 equal to 6. So that's 2 plus a minus 5 equal to 6. a minus 3 equal to 6. a will be equal to 9. Right, now a few exercises for you to practice. Question 1, find the remainder when x squared plus 3x minus 8 is divided by 2x minus 1. So be careful here. 2x minus 1 equal to 0. x will be equal to half. 
So you need to find B of half. Question two, find the remainder when 2x cubed minus 5x plus 11 is divided by x plus 2. Question 3. Find the remainder when 2 times x plus 1 cubed plus x plus 3 to the square is divided by x plus 4. Question 4. The expression 4x cubed minus bx squared plus 6x minus 5 leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by x minus 2. Find the value of b. Right, now we move to the factor theorem. The factor theorem states that a polynomial x minus a is a factor of the polynomial p of x if and only if p of a equal to 0. Another way to look at it is if a polynomial expression f of x is such that f of a equal to 0, then x minus a is a factor and vice versa. Now remember, with the remainder theorem, we said that the remainder is given by p of a, right? Here, we say that p of a equal to 0. Therefore, we have no remainder. All the remainder is 0. Okay, you need to be careful with the word factor. When you see in a question is a factor, it implies that P of A or F of A, if you want, equal to zero. Look at this example. Let F of X equal to 2X squared plus 5X minus 7. Is x minus 1 a factor of f of x? Okay, how are we going to do it? Well, f of x equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 7. We know that if it is a factor, then f of a should be equal to 0, right? Now, if x minus 1 is a factor, then f of 1 should be equal to 0. Then, we only need to prove that if we replace all the x by 1, we need to get 0. So, if we get 0, we know that x minus 1 is a factor. Now, let's replace all the x of, in the expression f of x by 1. So, that will be 2 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 7, which will be equal to 2 plus 5 minus 7. That is 7 minus 7 is 0. Therefore, we have proved that f of 1 equal to 0. So, if f of 1 equal to 0, then we can say that x minus 1 is a factor of 2x squared plus 5x minus 7. Now, look at this example. Given that x plus 2 and x minus 3 are factors of ax cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 12, find the numerical values of a and b. Okay, how do we proceed? First of all, let f of x equal to ax cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 12. We know that x plus 2 and x minus 3 are factors, right? So if there are factors, we can say that f of minus 2 should be equal to 0 and f of 3 should be equal to 0. Okay, let's start with f of minus 2. Now, f of minus 2, we replace all the x by minus 2. So that's a times minus 2 cubed plus a times minus 2 square plus b times minus 2 plus 12 equal to 0 which will be equal to minus 8a plus 4a minus 2b plus 12 equal to 0, right? You simplify it, you will get minus 4a minus 2b equal to minus 12. Divide by negative 2, that will be 2a plus b equal to 6. Let's call it equation 1. Now we move to f of 3 equal to 0. Okay, so that will be a times 3 cubed 
plus a times 3 square plus b times 3 plus 12 equal to 0, right? That will be 27a plus 9a plus 3b plus 12 equal to 0. That is 36a plus 3b equal to negative 12. We divide by 3. 12a plus b equal to negative 4. Let's call it equation 2. Now, when we have two equations with two unknowns, what do we need to do? We need to solve simultaneously. Right, so let's rewrite the two equations. Okay, it's easier to... Well, we can eliminate the b, right? So that will be minus 10a equal to 10. a will be equal to 10 divided by minus 10, which is negative 1. When we have the value of a, we need to find the value of b. So when a equal to negative 1, replace in equation 1, 2 times negative 1 plus b equal to 6. So negative 2 plus b equal to 6, b will be equal to 8. Therefore, a equal to negative 1 and b equal to 8. Now, a few exercises for you to practice. Question 1. If x plus 1 and x plus 3 are factors of x cubed plus 2x squared minus ax plus b, find the values of a and b. Number 2. The expression 4x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 10 is divisible by x minus 2 and leaves a remainder of negative 16 when divided by x plus 1. Find the value of the constants a and b. Question 3. The expression x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 3, where a and b are constants, has a factor x minus 3 and leaves a remainder of 15 when divided by x plus 2. Find the value of a and the value of b. Question 4. The function f of x is equal to ax cubed plus 4x squared plus bx minus 2 where a and b are constant, it is such that 2x minus 1 is a factor. Given that the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2 is twice the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus 1. Find the value of a and b. Question 5. A polynomial p of x is ax cubed plus 8x squared plus bx plus 5, where a and b are integers. It is given that 2x minus 1 is a factor of p of x and a remainder of minus 25 is obtained when p of x is divided by x plus 2. Find the value of a and the value of b. Right. Here are a few links where you can get additional information on remainder theorem and factor theorem. Right, so today we have learned together how to use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. We have worked a few examples for you. So now you need to work the exercises found in your textbook. You can ask your teacher, your friends, your parents for help if need be. Okay, so we have reached the end of our program. Until we meet again, it's goodbye for now.